A warm welcome this evening to our choral evening song and to, all, to those also joining us online. Our psalm is Psalm number 39.
The first reading is written in the 11th chapter of the book of Exodus, beginning to read at the first verse. The Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go from here. Indeed, when he lets you go, he will drive you away. Tell the people that every man <coughs> is to ask his neighbor and every woman is to ask her neighbor for objects of silver and gold. The Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, Moses himself was a man of great importance in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's officials and in the sight of the people. Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight I will go out through Egypt. Every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the female slave who is behind the handmill, and all the firstborn of the livestock. Then there will be a loud cry throughout the whole land of Egypt, such as has never been nor will ever be again. But not a dog shall growl, growl at any of the Israelites, not at people, not at animals, so that you may know that the Lord makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Then all these officials of yours shall come down to me and bow low to, look to me, saying, Leave us, you and all the people who follow you. After that I will leave. And in hot anger, he left Pharaoh. The Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you in order that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed all these wonders before Pharaoh, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not let the people of Israel go out of his land. Here ends the first reading.
The second reading is written in the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Ephesians, beginning to read at verse 11. So then, remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who were called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you, who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. Here ends the second reading. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered unto Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of us.
Our anthem this evening is Tantum Ergo by Mois de Frey.
Let us pray. In our <clears throat> cathedral community this evening, we give thanks for our nave choir. We thank you, Lord, for their gifts, and we thank you for Alex's ministry as he leads them. In our own diocese, we pray this evening for the parish of Runcorn, Holy Trinity, for the community work that is done in that place. In the wider Anglican community, we thank you and praise you for the Diocese of Salisbury. We pray for their bishops and leaders in that place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling this evening with illness, especially remembering Graham Jones, Graham Joyce, and Tim McQuibbon. We also pray for the families and friends of Brian King and Sheila Brown as they mourn their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, on this night, the night he was betrayed, your son, Jesus Christ, washed his disciples' feet. We commit ourselves to follow his example of love and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he prayed for his disciples to be one. We pray for the unity of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he prayed for those who were to be believed through the disciples' message. We pray for the mission of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he commanded his disciples to love, but suffered rejection himself. We pray for the rejected and unloved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he reminded his disciples that if the world hates them, them it hated him first. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this night, he accepted the cup of death and looked forward to the new wine of the kingdom. We remember those who have died in the peace of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore.